All right, section 1.5 in notes is all about circles. So we're gonna talk first about the definition of a circle. So the way we make a circle is essentially to collect all of the points that are a fixed distance from the center. And that distance, and the, again, the distance we're talking about is that radius in the middle. We'll call the center the point HK. And a point on the outside is our XY coordinate. So when we're talking about kind of terms and vocabulary, R is obviously the radius, which is a fixed distance. And we said HK is the fixed point, which is the center of the circle. And we'll use the distance formula here to derive the equation for a circle. We know that fixed distance is our radius. And we'll use the distance formula here to calculate the distance between both of these two points over here on the right. So we'll say the difference in our x coordinates, x minus h, quantity squared plus the difference in our y coordinates, y minus k squared. And that is the distance formula. I'm gonna get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. We get r squared is equal to x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And this should look, should look familiar to you. Sometimes it's written where it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And you used to seeing it written that way probably. And remember, hk is the center of the circle and r is your radius. This is called standard form of a circle. All right, this next bit is particularly useful in the second half of this course. We will use this extensively. It is called the unit circle. And this is always centered at the origin and has a radius of one. That's why we call it the unit circle. It's got a radius of one unit. I've drawn it over here on the right. We'll use that pretty much in the second semester exclusively, uh, but it'll come up probably in almost every single chapter. All right, let's graph a few circles. It says graph the equation x plus two quantity squared plus y minus one squared is equal to 16. You should be able to identify the center fairly quickly. And again, remember it's x minus h and y minus k. So our center is the point negative two, one. And our radius is the square root of 16 or four. I'm gonna go to negative two, one. Put a point there and label that. I'm gonna go up four units. Put a point, right four, down four, and left four. And hopefully yours looks better than mine. Should be a round circle. If it looks more like an oval, if you graph it on your TI, you're always gonna use the Z square or the zoom square feature on your TI. We'll talk about using TI a little bit more in the next lesson. Or So let's take a look and see how we would graph this in our graphing calculator. This is a really good understanding for calculus. All right, so we're gonna talk about how to put this into a, a graphing calculator. You definitely have to solve for y in this case. So we always have a y equals menu in our calculator. So we're gonna solve this for y. I'm gonna say y minus one squared. I'm gonna put that x plus two quantity squared on the, on the other side. I'll say 16 minus x plus two squared. Square root both sides and make sure you have a plus or minus. and add one to both sides and we are done. So we've got two equations here. It looks like one, but because of the plus or minus, I'm gonna make y1 one plus the square root of 16 minus x plus two quantity squared and y2 one minus the square root of 16 minus x plus two squared. 
when you enter this into a calculator, the one plus is gonna give you the top half of the circle and the, the one minus is gonna give you the bottom half of the circle. This is really good to know for calculus, especially when you get into um, calculating area of known cross sections. Now, if I had solved instead for x instead of y, I would have had the left side of the circle and the right side of the circle. So make sure you know that it's something that will come up this year a few times. All right, let's take a look at the intercepts of this circle. To find the y-intercept, we're going to let x equal 0. And so that gives us, looks like 0 plus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared is equal to 16. And we're simply going to solve for y here. I've got 4 on the left side. I'm going to subtract 4. I've got y minus 1 squared is equal to 12. And if I square root both sides, I get plus or minus the square root of 12. And let's add 1. And root 12, we can, we can rewrite that as 2 root 3. So our intercepts here, 0 and 1 plus or minus 2 root 3. Those are our two y-intercepts. Let's find the x-intercepts the same way. And we're going to let y equal 0. So we'll say x plus 2 squared plus 0 minus 1 squared is equal to 16. Simplify that a little bit. I'm going to add or subtract 1 from both sides. Square root both sides and add a plus or minus. And I wind up getting negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 15. And let's write that as an ordered pair. Those are x-intercept and that is our y-intercept over there. All right, let's talk about the general form of an equation first before we expand this problem on the left. So the general form of a circle is always ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to zero. Now there's one term my guess is you've never seen before and remember a b c d e and f are all constants this term right here the x y term that term is what rotates a conic we might deal with that a little bit in the second semester of this class where we take a parabola or an ellipse or a hyperbola or even and we rotate it 30 degrees or rotate it 45 degrees clockwise and that's the term that actually creates that rotation so right now we're not going to deal with that term so you'll see most everything written like this without that term so it looks something like that so let's expand this one on the left we went up getting x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus y squared minus 2y plus 1 is equal to 16 we're going to put everything on the left side and we're going to rearrange it so it's in this order over here, descending order of exponents, and then alphabetical order, x is before y's. So all the quadratic terms first, we've got an x squared and a y squared. And then the x's, I've got 4x. And the, the y's, I have negative 2y. And then my constants, I've got 4 plus 1 is 5. Minus 16 is negative 11. And that would be our general form.